Hi, we're going to talk about math, but it's a whole new chapter. We're going to math chapter 19, and we're going to be introducing not division. So just here, let me fix that. Okay, what we're really talking about today is time. And it's about time for us to talk about time. So your pages are 367 is where we're going to start. We're going to do an introduction and we're going to do lessons one and two. You can do this. You got it. And it's May 12th in the year 2020. And I'm going to erase that. So here is our introduction. Some of these words you're going to already know very, very easily. So the vocabulary words that we're going to be using in this chapter we're going to talk about seconds. A second is a small unit of time. It takes about one second to raise your hand, depending on who it is. <laughs> Sometimes we would count seconds in my classroom. We would say one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Actually, I think that's a little slow. We're going to talk about a minute. A minute is a unit of time that requires 60 seconds. And then we're going to talk about an hour. An hour is a unit of time equal to 60 minutes. And we're going to be using those terms a lot when we're talking about the special clock that we use that's an analog clock that is a circle. It means it has to go all the way around, right? Right, because there's 60 minutes in an hour. You know what I noticed? That this is almost sort of like fractions in some places. It's very much, we're going to, yeah, fractions, okay. absolutely. Okay, so as a matter of fact, right here, a quarter hour, we're going to find out a quarter hour is a quarter of an hour. So a unit of time equal to 15 minutes. Not like a quarter in money, though. No, because it's not related to 25. Correct. So it's 15 out of 60 is one quarter or one fourth of an hour. So a half an hour, that's an easy one. A half an hour is a unit of time equal to 30 minutes. So if we have 30 minutes out of 60 minutes, that's half. So half, you like half thinking like it's, I was just thinking like if you had a big pizza, it's yeah. half of a pizza. Or you know, one of these videos shows a big cookie, a big mm -hmm. chocolate, uh, actually it's chocolate chip, but they use those little mini M&Ms. So they split the cookie in half. You'll want to see that one for sure. Okay, and then we're going to talk about a calendar. A calendar is a table or a chart that shows a year as days, weeks, and months. Now, here's the thing. You learned about calendars in first grade a and lot. And kindergarten. And kindergarten. And so each one of us has calendars in our room. So you know what those are. You probably are very familiar with days of the week and things like that. There but we're, are seven. There are seven. Anyway. Days of the week. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to talk about that at the very end of this chapter, and we don't spend a whole lot of time on it. Okay, and then I just wanted to let you know, this is probably one of the best videos that I found. It's called Homeschool Pop, which I'm sure you guys have seen before, and it's excellent, a little bit long. So you might want to look at this first and then check out the other ones, okay? Okay, so the very first thing we're going to talk about is what do you already know? So it says, circle the activity that takes longer, making a puzzle or tying your shoes. Now, technically, for some people, tying their shoes, was, it's yeah, a yeah, toss-up, toss especially if it's a quick puzzle. But I think the one they want you to circle is this one. Eventually, like when you get upstairs, unless you choose to switch over to Velcro, Tying your shoes needs to take about, what, 30 seconds? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe a minute. And that doesn't include all the time that your parents or your teacher was nagging you to do it. So, Okay, circle the digital clock that matches. So they're really trying to see, do you understand what a clock looks like? And do you understand the difference between the two arms? We're going to talk about that a lot. So I happen to remember that the long hand pointing at the 12 means I'm going to say o'clock. And then the shorthand pointing at the four means that it is four o'clock. And then they're going to have you count Miss, by fives. Yes, ma'am? Missies, can you show them your little hands that I'm, you I'm made? I'm getting on the next oh. slide. 
But thank you for asking. <laughs> Something to look forward to. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you know what? I'll do that before we change slides because there is one thing I wanted to say about that. Okay, count by fives because when you're on a clock, you definitely need to know how to count by fives quickly. So, once again, we're talking about times tables. Do you know your times tables, especially your five times tables? You have to know those. So, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, and then 55, 60. I don't think it's a coincidence that they stopped at 60 because we already talked about 60 minutes makes an hour. Okay, how many days are in the month of May? Now for this one, I had to say the little song. 30 days has September, April, June, and November. All the rest have 31. And so then I knew, okay, May has 31, right? It was nice they gave you a calendar there, but I wasn't trusting the calendar because I was afraid they were trying to trick me. That's always a good thing to think about yeah. with our curriculum you have, to, you have to do it on your own, right? What day of the week is May 20th? So I go to May 20th, whatever year they wrote this, and I go up and I see, oh, that's a Monday. So I'm going to say Monday. And now you just finished page 368, and that should have taken you less than a minute. Wow. Because you did it without all the talking that I did. But don't change the slide yet because there is something that I wanted to show you. Because one of the hardest things that I noticed when I was learning about time was I would get the two hands mixed up. Like which hand is which? So one of the things I did today was I made this. And then I, I always tell students, look at the word, hour. So the word hour is spelled H-O-U-R, okay? And then I said, okay, look at the word minute. So there I made one that says minute on it. It's longer. It is, and I said, look at the word minute. So do you notice that the word minute is longer than the word hour? So the reason why we have the smaller hand is the hour hand and the longer hand is the minute hand has to do with the size of the word. It doesn't really, but that's just another one of those ways to remember that helped me, okay? The small hand is the hour hand, the long hand is the minute hand because minute is a long word, hour is a short word. So it's just a, like I said, it's just a way to remember and to help you not be to be confused. And then we're gonna use those puppies in a sec. Let me tell you about what I have down here in the way of videos. Um, I said music, a great way to remember. So Jack Hartman, which we I know Jack we've Hartman. done a lot of Jack Hartman songs, especially in language arts. So he has some good analog clock songs on there. This is another clock song, and I'm not sure who does this, but it's good. So both of those are excellent. Okay. Okay, so here's our first clock. And I kind of wanted to do this one without the hands because we're gonna talk about on here how each one of these stands for a set of five. So we're gonna do it on here. To me, when I look at this, it just looks kind of crowded and confusing. So we're gonna go over on here a little bit too. And we're on page 369. So there are 60 seconds in one minute. There are 60 minutes in one hour. The hour hand on a clock points to the hour. That makes sense, right? The minute hand points to the minutes past the hour or the minutes before the hour, depending on how you look at it. So it says, write the hours inside the clock below count by ones. So they've really done it for you. 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and all the rest. So all of these, I'm not even going to fill them in because you guys already see it on there, so that shouldn't be any problem at all. But the outside is the minutes. It says write the minutes outside the clock, and we're going to skip count by fives. So this is the number one is five minutes. The number two is 10. 
the number 3 is 15, and I should hope by now you see the relationship. 1 times 5 is 5, 2 times 5 is 10, 3 times 5 is 15, 4 is 20, 5, that's not a very nice looking 5, 5 is 25, 6 times 5 is 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, and then when you get back up here to 60, that is the beginning of a new hour. O'clock. O'clock, right. So we don't say 60. That's a good point, Mrs. Lopez. We say O, and then there's a little apostrophe, O'clock. Okay, so this would be 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, and then when we get to 60, we don't say 60, we say o'clock. So some of the ones that you're gonna use a lot is 15, of course you're gonna use the half hour, which is 30, and you're gonna use 45, and we used to call this right up here, we would call this the danger zone. Because when you get almost to a clock, it starts looking like it's the next hour. But we're, that's not going to come into play too much right away. So we'll get to that later on down the road. So that's if you say till something, right? Right, exactly. So the most important thing that you're supposed to get from this page is the fact that we count minutes in sets of five. And it's just a quicker way to do it. And with the analog clock, analog means it's a circle. And um, if you want to hear more about that, this one is a really good video about how to tell time on an analog clock. And one of the nice things about watching these videos, is they go a little slower and you can pause it, rewind it, do it over if you need to hear it again. Sometimes I'm like that. I need to hear things more than once. Okay, we could go to the next slide. Okay, so they want us on page 370 to start writing down some times. So I made my clock a little bit bigger here. And remember, my hour hand is my shorter one. And I'm going to start with the one they have up there. And my minute hand is the longer one. Okay, so when you want to know what time it is, you look at the shorter hand and you see what is the shorter hand pointing at, and you say that number first. So you're gonna say three, and then you're gonna say o'clock. So I'm gonna write up here o'clock, because we don't say 60 minutes. Three o'clock. Okay, at each hour, the minute hand points to the 12. Draw the hands on the clock to show the time then write the time in the digital clock. Now, even when I taught in the upper grades, we still had to talk about clocks. It got a little more complicated, but we had to talk about clocks. And sometimes, especially when a teacher's trying to see, well, what are they writing there? You have to almost, as a student, you almost want to exaggerate that this is the shorter hand and that one's the longer hand, especially because that clock's pretty tiny, correct? So when I show eight o'clock, remember my minute hand is gonna stay there. My hour hand is gonna be pointing at the eight and that's for eight o'clock. So I'm gonna put an eight here and then I'm gonna put zero, zero, right? After those two dots, those two dots, that's called a colon. So eight o'clock. Now watch how I write this. I'm gonna make my hour hand really small and I'm gonna make my minute hand very large so that there's no doubt that that's an eight and that's a 12, but the shorter hand is the one pointing to the eight. Sometimes students like to put arrows. Keep your arrows small, don't make them go crazy. Okay, the next one is four o'clock. So I'm gonna leave the minute hand there and I'm gonna to point to four so I'm gonna make a short hand pointing to four 
and a long hand pointing to 12. And I'm going to say 4 colon 0, 0, and that's 4 o'clock. I guess I make my O capital O. And they just make it a small O. So it doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't think so either. Okay, 7 o'clock looks a lot like 8 o'clock, but now I'm pointing at the 7. So little arrow points at the 7. Doesn't have to be perfect. Big arrow points at the 12. And I write 7 colon 0, 0. Then I have 9 o'clock. So the little hand points like that, and the big hand points the 12. One of the things you're going to notice is that the long, longer hand is almost touching the numbers, especially in these little tiny clocks they give you. 9 colon 0, 0 is 9 o'clock. And then 11 o'clock. So I'm going to do it like that. Little hand points at the 11. Big hand points at the 12. Okay, and so then I'm going to go 11 colon 0, 0. Okay, you also have new videos down here. This one is also by Jack Hartman, but this is more of a hip-hop kind of gangsta kind of song. Yep. You guys will like it. So anyway, that's it for that page. But now we have another page. Because that one was really easy. So it should have yeah, that done in no time. It shouldn't have taken you very long at all. Okay. So now we're going to talk about before and after an hour. So we mentioned this a little bit on the last lesson, but 30 minutes after two means two colon 30. So they have it written for you. Of course, you're gonna go over those lines, right? And so that's 30 minutes after two, we would say 2.30. Sometimes we used to say half past two. It just means half an hour past two. Half okay. the clock. Right. 30 minutes before three is how many minutes after two? Well, it's the same, right? If you look at those two halves, the white half and the yellow half are the same size. So 30 minutes after two is 30 minutes before three. Draw the minute hand to show the time. Write the time. So what they have on here for you is they have the hour hand already there for you. So if you notice, this is halfway in between five and six, but it's 30 minutes before six. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write the minute hand, and mine's almost like touching. So this is 5.30. And if you notice it, I'm gonna stop for a sec and I'm gonna show you on this cool little Judy clock, 5.30. So, the nice thing about Judy clocks is, do you notice the red hand is halfway in between? And if I, sometimes when I was teaching even older students, and then I'd say, okay, show me 5.30, and they'd go, oh, Miss East, for some reason this is broken because it won't point to the five. No, it's doing the right thing. It's halfway in between five and six, which is what it's supposed to be. So don't get confused by that. The nice thing about these clocks is as I turn the minute hand, the, did you notice the red hand is automatically moving? So that's supposed to work that way. Okay, 30 minutes before two is 1.30, right? Because it's not two yet. So there's the one. You'll notice that the hour hand is halfway in between one and two. So I'm gonna put 1.30. 30 minutes after 8 is going to be 8.30. So I'm still, the minute hand is still going on the 6. 8.30. Why do you think 2.30 is sometimes called half past 2? It's Mrs. Half, Lopez? It's half the clock. It's half the <laughs> clock. That's right. Half the clock 
you can see it's half an hour half an hour okay and uh yeah that's it for that page and as mrs lopez said before these are not super hard pages that's why you, you might notice you have a lot to do but you should be able to do it really quickly speaking of time so here's the next one this one says draw the hands on the clock and write the time so five o'clock remember we're gonna have the short hand pointing to the five and the long hand is pointing to the 12 and then 30 minutes after five what time would that be 5 30 5 30 that's right so we're gonna write a five and then there's a colon and then 30 okay shut off your video do this page on your own do it on your own ready shut it off shut it off okay turn it back on let's check your answers sorry i always forget that 30 minutes after five so remember five is the hour so that's going to be the shorthand and then 30 minutes after i'm going to point to the six always 30 minutes after 10 shorthand goes to the 10 long hand to the six between the 10 and 11. uh yes and actually i i kind of did it that way mm -hmm. this one's a little bit wrong because it should be you know it's kind of well, it's small. well, what's interesting yeah, is that is you're small. doing 30 minutes as half of the hour. So also, too, you have that. It's, it's halfway. It's on halfway. my duty yeah. clock, it would be, look it. In between. Yeah. Very good. 30 minutes after 8. So that means I'm going to make it more in between 8 and 9. It's going to be halfway there, right? Right. And so then it would be 8.30. Oh, no. It says 30 minutes before 8. See how easy it is to make a mistake? By golly. What, what comes before eight? Seven. Ah, uh, good thinking. Thank you. So that one's seven thirty. So a little bit of a clue there. If it says after the time, it's the number that's there. And if it says before the time, it's the hour it's the number before the number. So if oh. it says eight. That was What's great. before A is you seven. You know what? I think I made that mistake on purpose. Ah. Just so we could go over that. <laughs> because that's a good way that people sometimes make errors. So that way it won't happen to you. And everybody makes mistakes. So one o'clock. I'm going to point to the one. And I'm going to point to the 12. I'm going to stop making arrows. 30 minutes before. Wait, I can do this. Before one. Ooh, that before one's a toughie, 12, though. What? There's then no number that comes before one. Twelve. Oh. Because all I have to do is look at the clock, and I can see, well, what number is before one? Twelve. So there's that. And then my minute hand is going to go straight down. So that's it. And it's really going to be twelve thirty. And then I forgot to do this one. There we go. Four o'clock. So I'm going to point, the little hand goes at the 4, the big hand goes at the 12, 4 o'clock, 30 minutes after 3. So that means I'm going to be halfway in between 3 and 4, and I'm going to be on the 6. And I'm going to say it's 3.30. Oh, and then they have digital clocks. Yeah, but they see those all the time. Digital clocks is sort of like cheating. Not really. 30 minutes after 9 means it's going to be 9.30. 30 minutes before 2, what number comes before 2? 1. 1.30. 12 o'clock, that's easy. That means 12 and two zeros. And then 30 minutes after 6. After means I'm just going to write the 6 and then write 30. Okay. Sometimes people estimate time and use the word about. Estimate these times to the nearest hour, then draw a line to match. So if it's about six o'clock, like not six o'clock, but almost six o'clock, I'm gonna say it's this one right here because that's about 10 till six. Yeah. Sound good? And the hour looks like it's pointed at the six too. It does. You could draw a line. I just wanted to make it real visual for you. If it's about seven, that means it's almost seven. 
So that's going to go like that. And then it's a little bit after five, right? So I'm going to go like this and like that. Okay. Um, these ones are just fun. This is Sesame Street where the count is counting time on a clock. So that's pretty cool. And Umigo is like a cartoon and they're having this fun little video about time. So have fun with those. Erase, erase, erase. And you checked your answers and you made sure that you didn't make any mistakes like Miss East did on purpose. <laughs> okay, and so our lesson is not over. You still need to practice IXL, math, Q1 and 2. And that should be about telling time. Make sure you do math, IXL. Remember, we know. But that's okay. Language arts is important too. But just for this, you're doing math. Also, practice math times tables with flashcards or some other means of doing it. And there's a little fly in. There's a clock. And the clock is animated because we're learning about clocks. And then I think there's one more. Maybe not. That's it. Have a good day.